right on the set. Hello. Hello, welcome back welcome to back. another episode of the In Action Pod. It's me, Derek. And it's me, Daniel. And uh, Rhett's not here Rhett's this not week. Here. No, he's fortunately, uh, he's away. Um, just having his best life, hopefully. Yeah. So, um, just me and Daniel today, we're going to talk some news. Not a lot of news, a lot of stuff that at least I, I kind of caught up on in the last couple weeks. Uh, some stuff I'm excited to talk about, too, so... But let's jump in some uh, some news headlines. Yeah. So, uh, for you, there's a lot of exciting castings for this Hunger Games prequel. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah. And the most recent casting for the villain is Viola Davis. Viola Davis. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Film. So, it seems to be getting a very nice cast going for it. Yeah. Um, I I did see they released like the first photo. Yeah, the first photo just looks like any. It just looks like a. It looks like a teen rom com yeah, or teen really like does. romantic drama, or whatever. Yeah. So nothing like unique. Nothing to too it. exciting, but I mean, it makes sense in the context of what's going on in that particular moment. Yeah, but obviously we're gonna get to see you know, the capital and mm-hmm. more intricate or elaborate stuff like what was shown in the other movies. Okay. Yeah, a lot of it takes place in the capital, so. And it just, I would assume it just started filming. I think so. so I think so, yeah. Um, so we're probably not going to see anything for a little bit. Yeah. On it. So. Yeah, and it's not supposed to come out till November of 2023, so. That makes sense, yeah. So, I, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm assuming it barely started started filming, like. That's what I'm saying. Probably within the last, like, few weeks. Yeah, it was probably with just, like, some, like, tests. Like, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. like, a costume or whatever. So, just a little tease. Mm-hmm. Um. Speaking of Isn't little teases, what do you have something to say? Did well, you? didn't Peter, Peter Dinklage get cast too? Uh, I think he did. Right? I yeah. want to say I don't he think did. We, I don't think we talked about that, did we? I don't remember. Just want to point out that my little tease was not to talk about Peter Dinklage <laughs> in this movie. It was going to be something else. But yes, Peter Dinklage is <laughs> in the movie, I think. Um, Sorry about that. I just... I just realized yeah. in my brain there the uh, <laughs> the connection. Let me look up the prequel real quick and see who else was in it. But yeah, Peter Dinklage. Is this uh, far enough back, too far to have like a young Hamish? I think it's like yeah, because it's yeah, it's the tenth Hunger Games, so it's sixty five years before the events mm-hmm. of the first movie. Okay, so I don't think Hamish was born yet because I think Hamish's games were like the fortieth games or the fiftieth games. Is there a book that is that? Or no? no. Okay, I thought mm-hmm. there was. No, uh, it's just people because Suzanne Collins has expressed interest in exploring other stories. Oh, I so see. So I think a general consensus would be that it would be cool to show his games. I see. Yeah. So. All right. So I have yes. A, she's the Viola Davis is the game maker. Mm-hmm. Um, Vol <laughs> Volumenia Gaul. Um, Peter Dinklage is the unintentional creator of the Hunger Games. Uh, Rachel Zegler, um, Josh Andreas Rivera, Hunter Schaefer, oh, yeah. Jason Schwartzman as uh, Caesar Flickerman ancestor, uh, Lucky Flickerman. He's always fun. Oh, yeah. And then some smaller names for the tributes yeah. from what I could tell, but yeah. Yeah. Okay, what was your tease? Uh, Joker 2 was confirmed. Oh, yes, it was. Uh, and it's uh, going to have Lady Gaga. As Harley Quinn. As Harley Quinn. I I don't know if that's 100% confirmed, but we're led to believe. Uh, yeah. It's Harley Quinn. Yeah. And I read that it's mostly going to take place in Arkham Asylum, this movie. I did read that. Um, and it's going to be musical inspired as well. Okay. So. so it's not going to be a full musical or we don't Well, we don't know. We don't know. I, but it is going to have musical elements to the movie. Okay. Interesting. It's definitely taking an in, in, interesting route with the sequel and at least trying to do something different, different yeah. which is always good rather than just yeah. kind of 
rinse and repeat kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I'm very eager, very excited for this. I'm kind of curious to see. I'm, yeah, I'm so curious. These about, two play off each other. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I think it's going to start filming maybe soon. Uh, I think it's supposed to come out in 2024 as well. Yeah. So I think October of 2024. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, but other, we got a bunch of big movies coming out in 2024. Kung Fu Panda 4 confirmed. What? Kung Fu Panda 4. I thought the third one was like, it kind of closed everything off, right? No. I, they just did a new series. It had Jack Black come back and revoice Poe on Netflix. And I think, I don't know if that had any tie to this coming, but this got announced for 2024. Interesting. Okay. Um, given how the new Puss in Boots movie looks with the animation style, I'd be curious to see how Kung Fu Panda will maybe adapt in a similar way if they try to change up their animation style too, which could be very cool, uh, especially with like the, the, like kind of like the setting and the influence of it. Yeah. Um, I'm just waiting for Shrek five. I was going to say Shrek, Shrek five. five. When? Where Shrek are you? Five, Shrek when? five. You know, I never saw the fourth one to be fair. I so. did see it. Uh, I heard him mix things about it. Uh, I think it was better than the third one. I think. Okay. I'll even yeah, remember the third one wasn't great. It's like it's uh, alternate like timeline. And yeah, it's... with Rumpelstiltskin. Mm-hmm. Isn't that Martin Short? No, it's it should be Martin Short though, but it's not. I think it's like one of the directors who voices him. I don't think it's. Really? I think so. It has like John Hamm and Craig Robinson voicing ogres. So, Interesting. yeah. Okay. Um, I think though, if Puss in Boots does well, I think I I would think a Shrek They're movie gonna, yeah. would come. Shortly and Shrek after. has had, has had such. You know, a peak in interest mm-hmm. within the last few years. So the, I feel like it would kind of yes make sense the for them culture. to ca- yeah for it's them good. to capitalize on that. I feel like they have to be. I would hope the they nostalgia be. and like you know the newer generation discovering the movies would yeah probably be very even beneficial. So who knows? Maybe they're already planning on it and they haven't announced. Especially with these Shrek raves happening. Shrek raves oh are, my God, yeah. are the next big thing right now. Yeah. If you don't know what a Shrek rave is, uh, it's exactly what you think it is. <laughs> I think I saw it on TikTok and it was just a rave, but it was a bunch of people dressed like Shrek. Uh, Shrek, Shrek characters. Shrek characters. Yeah. Uh, the music from the movies was there, remixed <laughs> as well. Just an absolute uh, ogre blast. Uh, oh there's one coming God. up nearby to us. Yeah? And we, yeah. I would absolutely love to go to a Shrek rave. So <laughs> catch me there in my best Shrek attire. I want to wear that shirt that uh, says slut, <laughs> but it's oh, in the yeah. Shrek font. With the Shrek S, yeah, yeah. the font, yeah. Uh, there's that picture of like Danny DeVito wearing it. I hope it's real. I feel like it's Photoshop. I, part of me wants to like imagine that he actually wore that shirt. Yeah. So anyways, <laughs> uh, along with uh, Kung Fu Panda 2024, uh, Sonic 3 got a really state. I did see that for Christmas. Holidays, yes, mm-hmm. for Christmas. It's going right up against uh, an Avatar movie, supposedly. Two blue forces going up against each other. You know what I hope? Sonic wins the battle of the blue forces. Sonic will, because Sonic beat Birds of Prey, <laughs> the first one. That's true. The second one beat, God, it beat another big movie that came out pretty close to it, or like it overpassed it. I'm trying to remember what it was. What came? Oh, it was Morbius. I think it like <laughs> <laughs> that was the other. There was I that mean, be- the Morbius was yeah. Y- yeah, but yeah. Um, very exciting. No casting for um, Shadow yet. Okay. So I, I got I gotta imagine to be someone pretty big. Yeah, I did see yeah. uh someone do like a a video of Christian Bale and they put his voice over <laughs> Shadow. I'm like, it kinda works. I don't think he'd ever do it, but it, it, it does it really works well. Yeah. Um I my bet's still Keanu Reeves. I feel like Keanu Reeves is like He would do it. I he think would, he, can do he it. would for sure do it. He's voiced animation before, right? Yeah. He's uh oh yeah he did like Toy Story four oh yeah yeah he and then do kaboom yeah. he was in the new I Secret Life something. of Pets not Secret Life of Pets DC Pets and he was Batman yes he was Batman in that yeah, as well yeah. so can I for Shadow twenty twenty four let's 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 start a campaign let's start a hashtag a, t- a Twitter campaign <laughs> um let's see let's see let's see oh this would have been a good time with the Shrek uh supposedly they want to do a Doctor Evil movie new line. Just Dr. Evil? Just Dr. Evil, which I've heard like 
it, like another Austin Powers movie was in like in the it's gestation. Been, it's been in the works for a while, for I years. Feel like. yeah. Um, and I just don't know why they didn't pull the trigger on it. I don't know if it just the last one didn't do as oh, well. The as last they one hoped. did great. So then I don't know. I don't know what happened. Like they should have. They at this point, like I feel like we should have a couple more movies at least. I don't know if Mike Myers got but tired of it. Whatever it was he he kind of. I wouldn't. I'm not gonna say retired, but he like stepped back from acting for a bit. Yeah. So maybe I feel like maybe that's the reason why. Yeah, because yeah. um, well he he well instead of giving us an last powers, he gave us the Love Guru. That was a piece. Oh shit! That it was. was not a good movie. Yeah. Um. And then the voice works probably nothing. But he's only popped up here and there in roles. Yeah, he was in Inglorious Bastards for he was like in a Glorious second. Bastards. Uh, um, I think he was in something recently, or is gonna be in something. So uh, Amsterdam. Yes, he's going to be in that. And then yeah. he was just had his own show come out on Netflix. The oh, really? the Penta. I don't remember the name, but he is like playing five different characters on it. Okay. I didn't hear great things about it. Yeah, but that's probably like his biggest thing he's done. Where I, I should say something he's like kind of leading, okay. but it had like Keegan Michael Key in it and like Ken Jong had some like good like people in it. But I just maybe he's just not didn't work. Yeah. Um. But I'd be I'd be curious to like they've done like Doctor Evil's come back for like commercial they've done like the commercials and like they've done like latent show bits with him. So I'd be kind of interested in getting another movie with him. Um. It yeah, seems yeah. like he's more. Okay, coming back to play that character than Austin Powers. So I mean, that'd be interesting. That'd yeah. be interesting. And there's, they already kind of showed Doctor Evil's like origins. Mm-hmm. So they could do something. They could definitely do something. Yeah, mm. I'd be curious to see if he uh, they end up doing it. I don't know if it's just like someone just kind of like saying they want to do it, and maybe they won't follow through with it. But I'd be like, I like to see it. Yeah, me too. I love um, those movies so. They have they're very nostalgic for me. So yeah, always great. Yeah, always good on the rewatches. Mm-hmm. Um, similarly, uh, I guess to an actor playing a big absurd character, uh, Tom Cruise talked about a couple movie projects he wants to work with Christopher McQuarrie on. Okay, one of those, which I think is another thing that's kind of been in the works, was a Les Grossman movie. He wants to the Tropic Thunder, the Tropic Thunder yeah, character. character. Uh, I think that's that's I, been rumored. I feel like for, for a while, for a while, yeah. and I'd love to see it. I think that he was fantastic. Oh, he was a scene stealer in that. Every he was so unexpected, and he looks so different too. Yeah. Like just the the makeup for that for that role, <laughs> un, almost almost unrecognizable, and just he really yeah. like goes into the character, and it's it's hilarious. Like uh, I would love it to see yeah. it, more of it. Me too. Um, the other two roles he was interested in is a like a song and dance musical. Really? Yes. Which he I, he does sing. He, he does. Okay. Because he was in Rock of Ages. Yeah, he was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which the movie that movie was okay. It was fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the last thing is just like another like new action thriller franchise that has franchise potential. That was what he said. You know, like an interview. I don't know if it was his Tom. It might have been Tom and Christopher talking about this. I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, I think Christopher might have a podcast or something that he does. Okay. And he talks about a lot of this projects, but um, that's the kind of stuff that they want to do. I don't know if anything's locked and confirmed, but these are just upcoming projects they would like to do. So a little different, a little bit the same, and then something that that's kind of been in the works for a bit. So okay. I'm, I'm assuming after like, the Mission Possibles, and especially Top Gun, he probably gets more, maybe bigger sway, and maybe some yeah. projects he wants to take on. So yeah. these seem like more of maybe like passion projects, passion projects that yeah, he can definitely. he can do. So I'd be excited. Yeah. Speaking of Top Gun, I read that it's very very close to passing Infinity War at the box office, which Domest- is huge domestically, domestically, yeah. which is insane. Yeah, it's insane. So it's like five million shy at this point. It's probably inevitable. It probably will. It just yeah. I think. Is it left theaters? Did it come back? It came back. That's probably why. It came back. No, I don't think it ever left, but they brought it back for like the big, big screen formats. So like uh, IMAX, XD and all that. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Yeah, it's been very popular. So who knows? Yeah, I could see it happening. Yeah, I could see it happening. Too. So I, I think it was number two at the box office this past weekend. Really? Mm-hmm. Like, what was number one? Uh, Bullet Train. Okay. Stay tuned for that. Stay tuned later. for that. For From him. 
<laughs> not for me. Um, yeah, I. It's just amazing that how well this movie did. Oh yeah, given, I don't think anyone expected. No one. But like I, I think I've mentioned it several times. I think either him or the studio knew they had something good on their hands, which is why they insisted so much on postponing it. Yeah, and and it worked. And it worked. It worked out for them because I, it cost them every time they they move it. Yeah. So they moved it what like four times mm-hmm. at least. Yeah, because I think it was supposed to come out in in the summer of twenty twenty. Yep. Memorial Day weekend. Yep. And then December. Moved December. And then probably summer again. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they definitely. Um, I think as of now, most of the COVID movies have come out. I think so. I think minions was like one of the last ones and that came out in july, july which yeah. also did really well in the box did, office yeah. which i think we talked about um so i don't know it's um it's definitely i think gonna kind of help bring alive the box office again yeah, and i mean yeah. i think there was a number saying that this summer it's for the like five movies hit like a certain box office number and that there has was been done there in, was a weekend where all the movies made 20 million like the top five movies and that hasn't happened in like a while yeah and it was i think it was like it was top gun one of them Mm -hmm. black phone was another one yeah probably minions probably minions probably a marvel movie maybe thor thor yeah and then i don't know what's left i don't know something else but yeah yeah but i remember reading that that it had been a while since that had happened where the five top five movies had made 20 million each Or more, obviously. Movies are back. Yeah, movies, movies are, are back. back. Um, <laughs> but we're, I think we're, we're about to enter kind of a little lull of movies. For yeah, a August tends to be the dumping month, they yeah. call it. Um, and then September picks up a little bit. I don't know if there's anything like huge coming out in there, September. There might be some like sleepers um, coming through. I want to see Bros. That comes out in September. Yes, that's that looks the really Billy funny. Eichner, like rom-com, yeah, the right? Yeah, rom-com. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's something else that comes out in September. That smile movie looks interesting. That looks interesting. Barbarian. Have you seen the trailer for that? That Bar- looks pretty interesting. Barbarian. Is yeah, that? It has Bill, not Bill. Yeah. Bill Skarsgård. That's who played Pennywise, no. right? Yes. Yeah, but, yeah. but no, I haven't seen the trailer. Yeah. It's interesting. It's like an Airbnb and this like girl shows up and mm. someone's already there, but she booked it. And then she like finds some like creepy stuff. In like mm. in the basement, that's what the trailers shows. So yeah, I've, as I just saw, I saw Bullet Train last night. So there's, I saw a lot of trailers for like the August September stuff. Uh, the smile looked interesting. There's another one that I had not seen a trailer for, and I looks like it could be really like kind of like um, really good. Which was the invitation. Oh, that looks interesting. Yeah, that the one with uh, Natalie Emanuel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I was in chase Thomas Doherty. Yes, I was very intrigued by it. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think what else, well, if there was something else. Uh, there was something, and I just completely forgot, besides bros. Um, there's that, uh, what is it? It's the Vilo Davis and... Oh, the, the the Woman King. The Woman King. Yeah. That looks like it would be good. Yeah. That looks good. Um, I also, I think this one is going to be a really good B type oh, movie. Oh, don't worry, darling. That comes out in September. That does come out yeah. September, yes. Very interested yeah. about that. Uh, Beast, this the it just elbow versus oh, lion yeah, yeah. movie. I feel it like comes out this weekend. That has good B movie potential, yeah. like so entertaining. Like yeah. you compared it to a uh, crawl. Crawl. I feel yeah. like if, I think it Which has we enjoyed crawl crawl. potential. We yeah. did. We I really like yeah. crawl. So I feel crawl like it was a fun kind of like man versus nature. This could hit similar vibes. Similar vibes. Yeah. Um, there's some good stuff coming. I think yeah. I'll, I'll yeah, just yeah. keep an eye out. But um, uh, what? I don't even remember the segue. Uh, <laughs> Jump into it. Any other news? Yes. They're doing another Saw movie. Oh, yeah. I did see that. They're not done with this. This is the 10th Saw movie. Uh, Good thing we got the final chapter, Liars. What was the final chapter? Was it the one with Chris Rock? That no. was separate, right? No, that was Spiral. Yeah, it was the one with Chris Rock. Yeah. Okay. That was no, supposed- no, no. No, there was one called like Saw oh. the Final Chapter. Oh, it was called Saw the Final and Chapter. And then they like after that they did that little prequel one, and then they did. Yes, that's right. Then they did um, 
Jigsaw was the the that was the like prequel. the newer one they did. That's right. And then they did Spiral with Chris Rock, which was a Saw story. So I don't know. They, these movies are uh, cheap to make and they're very profitable. That's why they keep making. They do. Them. They do really yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, I just have never had interest. I kind of had interest in the Chris Rock one. I just never but saw then it. I heard mixed things. I about heard mixed it. things about it too. The first one was good. The very first Saw. I couldn't do it. I tuned out of it. I don't. I just and I like horror. Yeah, you and do. I don't mind like body you don't horror like, stuff. Like gore, yeah. I don't. It's I, I'm I'm fine with gore, but for some reason this one just didn't sit with me, and I just fair. didn't feel like going yeah. back to it. I only saw the first one. Never saw anything else. I think like the first. I one heard is the like, first, is second, like, and third one are like pretty good. Pretty good. And then the rest after that, it starts like falling off. Yeah, it's just it's hard to maintain. Yeah. the like freshness of the like a horror franchise. Yeah, that's what happened to Paranormal Activity, also. Like the yeah. first, second, and third one are pretty decent. Yes, horror movies like with some good scares. Yeah, and then after that, this thing I'll, they he put them out. I'll keep watching them. I I those, those ones I'll just keep watching them because I those are like a guilty pleasure. But the first three I would say are actually pretty good. They are pretty they are decent. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. But after that, it's like, eh, yeah, it's whatever. The new one, especially, was just kind of like the 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 what was the new one called? The uh, oh boy, new. That's the one where me. they go to like the Amish. It's like the Amish community, community and they like right. it's like they found like a long lost relative or something. Okay. I think it honestly like usually those build. I felt like it did the reverse. I felt like the climax was really like flat. I think I talked about it in the review. You but, did. You did. Um, yeah. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um, Wizard of Oz is getting a remake. I did see that. Um, Which I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. I know they kind of dabbled around in the franchise. They've done like. Um, yeah, they did that Disney one, Oz the Great and Powerful. Oz the Great and Powerful. We have Wicked coming out. Wicked. They've done like animated, like. They did like uh, there's that sequel in the 80s, 90s. Oh yeah, Return to Oz. Return to Oz. Um, so they've like dabbled in there uh, with it, but this is probably the first straight remake, remake. I think. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. Because I don't. The thing is that I don't think they're gonna remake the movie itself. I think they're just doing like a new version of the story. That's what I would think too. So because. For, for a lot of people, the original one is, like, untouchable. Yeah. So I don't think they're going to try to remake it. They're probably not going to, like, you know, include songs. Yeah. Or maybe they will. Who knows? Who knows? But, I mean, it's public domain, so they can do whatever they want, pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's true, huh? It's, it's hit that point. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the director attached. They had a director attached. Yeah, Kenya Barris. Thank you. Yeah. What has he done before? Do you know? He created Blackish. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that movie, that uh, Netflix show, Black Black AF. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He's pretty funny. Um, he did something else, like another remake. I feel like, sort of recently. I don't know if he directed it, but he wrote it. See, and I don't think it was like well received. Um, he did coming to America. Okay. He wrote it. Okay. So maybe or, that's what I was thinking. He, he has a screenplay credit. Okay. He, and you guys like that movie, so Brett liked it. I thought it was okay. You, well, <laughs> you thought it was okay. Uh, what else has he done? He's the witches. The witches. That's what I'm thinking. He wrote of. that. He wrote that, and that wasn't very well received. That's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Uh, not great. He he wrote Girls Trip too. That one was good and kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, I'd say. A, yeah. Looks like um he was he wrote the new Cheaper by the Dozen. Oh, the one with Zach Braff. Yes. Okay. Um, and then his new show, yeah, Black AF, We the People. I don't know what the We the People is. You People is his next. He's doing another comedy with uh, Eddie Murphy. That's a movie? Yeah, it's uh, for Netflix, uh, starring Eddie Murphy and Jonah Hill. Okay. Um, okay. Good cast. Jonah Hill, Julie Louis dreyfus Oh, wow. Uh, Molly Gordon, Mike Epps. Okay. Rhea Perlman, David Duchovny. Pretty okay. solid cast. Yeah. I think I read something about this, and I think it's like... Um, it's kind of like a modern, not, I wouldn't say exactly, but I feel like it has tones of, uh, 
what is it? Guess who's coming to dinner? Okay. If the, yeah, if you know that. Yeah. So I think it's kind of modeled a little bit after that, but I feel like it'll still have its own kind of original take to yeah. it as well. Okay. Um, I think I had only two more things. Pac-Man movie, live action. Oh, yeah. And someone's, who's attached to it? Is someone attached to it? Oh, shit. I didn't see that someone was attached to no, it. No, maybe not. Maybe I'm just thinking of. But, yeah, I mean, makes sense. All these other video game movies coming through. Uh, it makes sense that. Oh, yeah. Jane the Virgin alum, Justin Baldoni. Justin Baldoni, yeah. That's what I did see that. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I would, I'm not surprised, given everything else that's going. Uh, last piece of news. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny. CW had a <laughs> okay they are kind of kind of canceling a lot of their shows a lot of the the dc first shows yeah. they're doing riverdale's ending um they had this apparently their demographic that came out is that uh their average audience age is 59 i did see that and they said they're going to now gear their content towards that towards that and i don't know what that means i said I don't know if is that means it's just like that's the age that are watching these shows or they think that they're gonna have to change the shows because that's who's watching. And I don't know it's one's worse. <laughs> I did read a, an interesting tweet and it was like it's like people it's like young ki- kids that are borrowing their like parents, you know, like cable information. Yes. Yes, that's right. <laughs> and that's why they think that their ages. Their viewers' ages higher, but uh, who knows? There's a lot of, uh, there's a bit of a shit show going on in Warner Brothers Discovery. They laid off like 70 people from the HBO Max side, um, and they there's some like mergers and things like that. Nothing, murders? Mur- I'm not murders. Mergers. I think mergers. They, I think HBO <laughs> and HBO Max like comedy writers got like are grouped together now. Um, there's a couple other things I don't remember, but this is after the tail end of we talked about a little bit on yeah, the last podcast. The HBO thing. Yeah. And for the most part, uh, they didn't can a lot of shows like we thought they were going to. They they had no plan. They said they have no plans to stop HBO Max content. Okay. But I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, Warner Brothers will merge with Discovery next year and become year. combined. Yeah. I think the funniest thing I saw of that whole thing is they had this like graph of all or not like this chart of all their big name stuff and they had a discovery stuff on there and i think the funniest thing i I read was the 90 day fiance cinematic universe or 90 day basically like this like i it was they were trying to make this sound like this like superhero thing it's like 90 day fiance universe and i'm like what the fuck did I read? <laughs> like, how many shows have branched off from that that they call a it lot. a universe? Yeah. I didn't know they have. Oh, that's so funny. I was, I laughed pretty hard. And then there was just like the shows you expect in the highlight, like yeah, they had all their DC stuff, and they had Friends and Big Bang Theory and a couple other Discovery stuff that was in there. Also, House of the Dragon comes out this weekend. Oh shit! It this does. Sunday, First, so they just, they just put it out one, or how many are they put it out? I think just one. I think it's going to be weekly. Okay. Yeah, I think it's going to be weekly. Uh, it did. It did premiere, and some people posted. I don't think we talked about this, did we? No. Uh, some people posted their like initial reactions, and they seem to be very positive. I mean, it has a low bar. After it the does have a low bar, but some people were like. A lot of people did say, like, you know, the finale left a bad taste in my mouth. And yeah. this is kind of washing it off. Okay. I'm hopeful okay. to see how, like, if, if the, because I think they screened maybe two, two episodes, okay. or three episodes. Uh, and they're like, if, if the show continues in the direction of the first few episodes, then it should, it should went over, went back over the fans and, okay. and wash off the, the taste. So what I was telling, what I was talking with Brett. Actually, because I, I told him about it when I read, and, uh-huh. <laughs> um, and I think George R. R. Martin wants to be more involved this time around. Yeah, that I makes mean, sense. Yeah, so maybe that's gonna be the difference, and it's different. It's a different team, right? It's not. It's not the D and D. 
uh, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss. Right. So got those games. Those she's got those guys off of it. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe I'm I'm cautiously optimistic. Yeah, I will be. I will be checking it out. Yeah, I will definitely watch it just just to see what what's up. And yeah, and if you know, we do have the Lord of the Rings show. Uh, yeah, September that premiered. 1st. That premiered yesterday. Oh, it did. Like any, it, they had the premiere. Any reactions to that? I didn't read anything. Okay, I, read I think anything. I'm gonna st- st- stay off of that. From what I read, I think the first two episodes will come out on September first, first. and then they'll be weekly after that. Okay. So we'll. And we're we're weeks away. Yeah, that's we're that's very 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 close. Two weeks, a little over two weeks. Yeah. Um, I did see when I went to saw my movie the other night. They did have a trailer of for that oh. within the trailers. Like it was mixed in. Oh wow! But I guess it does have that big name attached. So they it's it's trying to build this like big epic show. And yeah, I, yeah, definitely it makes sense. So I feel like there's a lot of hype surrounding it. So yeah. so. Yeah. Let's hope it. Let's, let's hope it lives up to let's it. Hope, let's hope, <laughs> or at least yeah, as close to it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's all my news. That's all I had. Okay. So now we can talk about what we've been watching. Uh, I've watched a lot. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, do you want me to go first since I only watched a couple of things? Yeah. You go for it. Uh, so I only saw, I only really saw two movies, uh, and then I've been catching up on shows. Okay. And things like that. So I am caught up. With mur- only murders in the building. Oh, okay. Oh. Very nice. So, how are you feeling on it? Oh, it's it's. Just I think this, we talked about yeah, this we the did. other day. Yeah, uh, I hadn't seen the newest one when I last saw you. Yeah, but now I did. I haven't seen this week's so obviously. Yeah, I'm very eager to. See, uh, yeah, this week I think it just came out today. This it came out today. And there's as one, of recording one more next week. The last yeah, the so, season. So we're down to the last two, which yeah. is crazy. It kind of went by fast. I am very excited to see where it's yeah. going. There. Yeah. I, there's probably they still feel like they're teasing potentially what who could it be but I think yeah but still, i don't think that's a red herring i think it is a yeah. red herring uh, too i think it's too obvious it's too obvious um i will say the episode where um mabel aka or selena gomez's character yeah. mabel is um with the deaf guy yes theo theo um yeah her acting was really good in that episode it was yeah like the, that's probably the best acting she's had and like, i think she just won an award she did at the hollywood something yeah critics association or yeah. something so yeah but yeah i i really i think she's been doing a really good job this season yes um, i agree our biggest concerns when the season started were amy schumer and cara delavine and they thankfully in. they haven't been in it Amy Schumer was barely in barely it. Barely in it. Cara and she Delevingne. hasn't been since. And Cara Delevingne. A little bit bigger than her. But she's been sprinkled in throughout. Not too much. Yeah. That was my concern. But and it, we were both concerned. About the, or all three of us. And yes. Thankfully, they've kept the same core yeah. dynamic. Which is what makes, I feel like, what makes the show work. Yes. So, 100%. So. Yeah. This the, the, That episode where they're going, they're walking up the stairs and <laughs> Oliver's just like, Complain the, the whole, time. whole time. He's carrying up his dips. <laughs> the dips. I just love Martin Short. He's he's him. great. Yeah. Uh, so I'm caught up with that. I'm caught up with what we do in the shadows. Yeah, same. Which has been great. It's been fantastic. It's been fantastic. Um, the last episode. The wedding. The wedding was yeah, good. That was hilarious. Um, but yeah, it's been that's been it's been a good season. <laughs> it has. It has. Um, I don't think we talked about that. The episode where with. Nandor's <laughs> yeah he has like the he has like the facial construction because the facelifts and facelifts whatever and <laughs> that was hilarious I mean we're we're fans we're big fans of the show we've mentioned it multiple times but it's been a really good season definitely get on and that already got renewed for like two more seasons right Dude, that's why I'll keep watching yeah, I absolutely I'll, yeah I will keep watching um so I'm caught up with those um and I saw Easter Sunday the Joe Coy movie. I did see a review on this. Did you see this with Brett? I did. Uh, he's not here to talk about it, but he's not. did he like it more than you? I think we both had similar. I don't know if he would rate it higher. I ended up bringing it down. I saw you brought it down. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> I was like, Ugh, like it kind of didn't sit well with me. Yeah. Um, we thought it had its moments. Uh, I mean, I, I'll let Brett talk about it more. Uh-huh. When he returns. I think the issue with me 
was that the movie tried to be a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So it suffers a little bit of, of an identity crisis. I see. Like it tries to be a comedy. It tries to be a drama. Mm -hmm. It tries to be like... I had a lot of tonal issues. Yeah. Okay. So it's the tone is all over the place. The jokes don't land half the time, Oof. if even. Um, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, it has the ingredients to be, you know, a great comedy, but it just never comes together. Yeah. And it's supposed to be based on his It's a stand-up, stand -up, right? Yeah. But he didn't write it. Oh. So I think that might be the issue. That's part of it, probably. Yeah. yeah. He didn't write the movie. Like, if he would have written it, maybe. Yeah. Maybe it would have been better. Um, that being said, it does have some funny moments here and there. Yeah. Um, the cast is pretty solid. Like, you think everyone does well with what they're giving. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of very meh. Okay. It's very underwhelming. Mm -hmm. If you ask me, like, I thought. The trailers made it look like it was going to be okay. It looked like it was going to have, like, I didn't think it was going to yeah. be, like, the worst. But I thought yeah. there was going to be, like, a decent comedy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. At least a decent comedy. And Doesn't nope. seem like it hit that either. Yeah. Unfortunately, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, I did see another movie that I enjoyed a lot. This one, I yeah, yeah I, want, I want to see this one. And it's Bodies, 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 yes. which, uh, you know, from the trailer, I was always interested in it, but the trailer kind of, yeah. for some people, like I had uh, a friend of ours, Alec, comment yeah. how he thought the trailer looked annoying. <laughs> yes. Uh, I don't know. What do you thought of the trailer? Uh, I thought it was just, I, I didn't think it was annoying. I thought, well, if anything, that was going to be like, okay, this is going to be like, uh, like a pair, or like it's going to be yeah. like. I, I knew exactly the tone yeah, yeah. the movie was going it, to portray. It, it's, a, it's a satire at the end satire. of the day. That's what yeah. the word I wanted, yes. It's a satire of, you know, Gen Z pretty much. Yep. And the people that are like the, the generation that's on their phones constantly. And, yeah. You know, using all these terms and things like that. So it, it, for me, the trailers always made it seem like that, like a satire. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like when it started getting closer, I started hearing really good things about it. Mm. And I was like, oh, like I was already interested, but now I'm more interested. And yeah. it was very funny. It was very funny. It's a very, it's a whodunit. Mm. And, but it does have like two, two, a couple of jump scares. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. But like nothing that's going to like, you know. Okay. Disturb you or anything or make you lose sleep. Because it's mostly a comedy. It is, a, I would call it a, thriller comedy or maybe not even a maybe a i don't know maybe it is a horror but okay. it's a different type of horror you know yeah. yeah okay um it's very funny the cast all does really good for me the one that stands out the most is rachel senate mm -hmm. uh, she hasn't been in a lot of things before this um i talked about one of her movies before shiva baby yes I've seen her on social a lot. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's kind of big on, on social media. Mm. Um, and she's done some TV shows, but movie-wise, I feel like this mm. is maybe her breakout role okay. in a way. Um, okay. She was very good in Shiva Baby, so I knew she was going to be good. Uh, mm. But she was just... She, her character in this movie is fucking hilarious. <laughs> and it's a whodunit. Mm. Um, so it's it's kind of like it keeps you guessing right up until the end, to be honest. Oh, okay. So that's that was very. I think they pulled that off really well. Mm. Um, at least for me, I don't know if anyone else. I don't know anyone else that has seen it. I would like to go see it. Yeah. I'm very like eager to see it. The Jan, who I saw it with, which she enjoyed it a lot too. Uh -huh. uh, we both did. There's a scene kind of towards in the back end of the movie that's fucking hilarious. I've seen a couple people yeah. like talk about this a scene i haven't seen it yeah. spoiled by it but like in a reviews they they talk about the scene so oh yeah it's fucking hilarious it's okay. like so well written so sharp like mm. the movie itself is the whole movie is very well written but oh. that scene in particular just okay makes the whole movie worth it in my opinion okay. and it's a short movie it's like an hour and a half so yeah but i definitely recommend it it's it's already in the top of of the year for me. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I want to see it. I've, yeah, I've been like just, the reviews have made me yeah. excited to watch it. So. I just really, really enjoyed it. And I didn't think I was going to enjoy it a lot. So yeah. yeah, it's, it's very, very good. So that's what I saw. So hit us with your long ass list. Yes. Yeah, so I got quite a few to <laughs> talk about. I saw a lot. Um, and a lot of these I did like, I do want to watch 
And one in particular I did want to watch before, but I fell asleep before I even put it on. So Yeah, most of these I were streaming, uh, yeah. except Bullet Train, but I'll save that. I'll start with Minions, The Rise of Gru. That just hit uh, uh, Movie on Demand. And uh, I was, you know, after the whole trend and everything, I was kind of e- kind of curious to watch yeah, we, it. Yeah, we said we were going to watch it. So. Um, so, and I was like, oh, I watched it with Kelly. And uh, <laughs> now this one. You said it was better than the first one. It was better than the first but Minions, it's still... but it's not great. Okay. Uh, it's still like, <laughs> it's, it's funny. It has funny moments, but like ultimately like it's just kind of like. Is it just like annoying or what is it? Sometimes it's annoying. Sometimes it just feels like scenes like like thrown. It just seems like a bunch of scenes. There's no like like through line. Gotcha. There is like a plot, but like it's a very weak plot and it's just kind of like hard to kind of like <laughs> keep with this movie. Um, and the jokes don't carry enough throughout to make you want to keep watching. Um, the animation looks good. It's that's fine. Um, there are some funny gags in it with the minions. Like I just think that it's hard for them to carry a movie. Yeah. It helps that Gru's in it. That's kind I was going to say, at least Steve Carell and, you know, Julie Andrews came back for this. And She's barely Michelle in it. Yeo. Uh, Michelle Yeoh is also kind of underused. It's, uh, to be honest, most of the human cast is like, is besides it? Gru, is like not really used a ton. They're like okay. kind of barely in it. What I thought was the most interesting is like the villains are all like, kind of like, big like they're all like 80s 90s action stars so it's like really okay it had like uh well besides taraji p henson voices the leader but oh yeah, 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 yeah it's like dolph lundgren is one of them um god who else is in it uh um <sighs> dolph lundgren uh john claude van damme oh really uh, i'm trying to danny trejo <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, what's her name? She was um, Zena. Oh, Lucy Lawless. Lucy Lawless. Um, is that everyone? I feel like I'm missing someone. I feel like I am still missing someone. Michelle Yao. Uh, I had Alan Arkin. Yeah. As well. I think there's Will one. Arnett. Will Arnett. He bring. He voices a character. He. He was in the first one. And then so does Russell Brand. He comes back to yeah, voice the character. Dr. Nefarious. He's a yeah, a younger um Dr. Nefario. Uh, Nefario, I mean. Yeah, get your minion lore right. Uh who's the last guy? There's one more, I think. Riza. Maybe that was they I did get no, them all. I think that was it. Okay, I did yeah, get them all. Because I didn't see anyone else unless Steve Coogan, maybe. He vo- he brand- he comes back as a character. He was Rams in- Bottom. As oh, yeah, I remember, ones. and then the minions go but them. But them. But them. Um, yeah, it's fine. I mean, I <laughs> any diehard minion fans will watch this. <laughs> um, gentle minions rise up as if you, as they did for the theater, uh, for the box office, but this one was just fine. Not, 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 not really worth, not much. Okay. Um, unfortunately, another anime movie I watched didn't do a whole lot better than this one, and I'm bummed to say this, at Lightyear. You did see Lightyear. I, I meant to watch that, too, and I didn't get around to it. So of all the Pixar movies that come out of, uh, during COVID times, this is the one that should have gone to, that stream. should have gone to streaming because this one feels I'm so bitter that most. Turning Red Every was, other was pushed Pixar to streaming. Movie. I feel like Turning Red should have been in theaters. It should have been. Every other Pixar. Since Soul, everything else has been better and onward. Everything was better than this. I don't know how what happened here. If they just I think they were banking on the name. They absolutely were. And that's why they thought it was going to do well. And it underwhelmed at the box it office a did. lot. It was a just lot. very, like, bland. Like, that's what um, I've heard. Yeah. Animation looks great. Like, it's really beautiful animation. I mean, yeah. At least you can always count on a Pixar movie being beautifully animated. But. Yeah. And th- it's like... It's kind of a... It's a weird movie, too. Because I think sometimes it tries to fixate too much on him being like the inspiration to Buzz Lightyear. So they have to try to shoehorn a bunch of things that the toy did to justify him. Okay. So like, uh, I am trying to think of something like to do the, they show in the trailer like to the to infinity Pretty and beyond. Yeah, That's like yeah. a whole like quote. He does the suits. Um, it's kind of some, some mannerisms are kind of like, you know, from taken from the toy story movies that are kind of thrown on here too. Okay. 
there is some good stuff in there. There's some good action scenes and all that, but I just didn't think it was as entertaining as some of the other movies have come out where not as like, there's no, like it's not emotional or there's times where it's trying to be, but doesn't really hit it doesn't those. Hit, it doesn't land. Yeah. It doesn't land. The story is just kind of, it's just very like, uh, done before. Nothing like no. crazy. Um, there's a, there's a good voice cast. So, you know, it's, you know, Chris Evans, Kiki Palmer, Taika Waititi. There's some good, uh, voice actors in there, but, um, most sometimes they're kind of underutilized. I feel like so. Okay. It's, well, that's that's a shame. It's very it's it's good, but yeah. they, I wouldn't. This is probably a low tier Pixar movie okay. for, for me at least. So it's on Disney Plus. That's what I've heard. Yeah, that so it's lower tier. Kind of glad I didn't see it in theaters. Okay. So, um, oh, where what do I want to talk about next? Okay, this one's an interesting one. So I watched this documentary on HBO Max um, called. We met in virtual reality. I did see that you rated it. Yeah. I did. Do you know anything about this? No. Nope. Do you know what VR chat is? Uh, I mean, is it just literally a, a VR chat? So yeah, it's essentially like, like you, you, yeah, you wear your VR and you kind of go into this like hub world and you have your avatar and you can see other people with their avatars in this. And it was a big thing during COVID. This kind of, and then this documentary kind of follows a couple people that kind of have lifestyles within uh, this. It's really interesting. Um, it's all shot in VR chat. Okay. So everything, everything is done within the game or within the app, okay. whatever it is. Um, all the interviews, all like the interactions. And it kind of shows like different people, like one person, like, they are doing sign. They sh- they're teaching sign to people within VR chat and like the hand motions. Like you can really kind of like do everything you need to do, which is really interesting. Someone was doing like yoga and it's talking about how like it influenced them to do this, how they got involved in it. Um, someone like met like they're dating someone within it. It's very interesting, but um, I think what kind of doesn't like hold it together is like sometimes it doesn't feel super cohesive. Like, it just like there's you don't really hear from our like I guess our documentarian that much and there's like you just really are just, you're just kind of following these people and they're like they're talking to camera and everything but it's interesting but I kind of wish there was more to it okay and I will say that I feel like it can come off cringy <laughs> I, I I can imagine it can yeah. come off cringy and that's it's just hard to not cringe watching it I yeah. no hate to them I it seems like they're really happy but it's hard to watch and not cringe while watching it it's it's but I I don't no ill will I think it's I do like I think it's really fascinating like how it affected these people's lives like how much they've like really grown and like done like if they would get paid for doing stuff they're doing they would probably do it like most of it is just like they're doing this stuff to just because it's like a, just, okay. a hobby. Interesting. So. Okay. I think it's worth a watch, though. I think it's interesting. It's short. It's on, as I said, it's on HBO Max. So it's worth checking out just for like, like the slice of life that it is. Like what, it, what you can see. Interesting. So. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, what else? What's next. I will talk about. Let's see, Harley Quinn. The new season just came out. And I it's kind of, Oh, yeah, you really like that show. I do. New season's been really good. There's a lot of good humor, a lot of good boy, uh, guest stars on there. I think James Gunn shows up for a couple episodes. Yes. Uh, Billy Bob Thornton was in one. Um, Harvey Guillen. Harvey Guillen. He's, he's Nightwing. He's Nightwing. He's really funny. Um, the new season's been solid. Uh, great writing still. Uh, the characters are great. Um, I do like what they do with, like, the Batman world and the DC characters and how they kind of interpret them in a more comedic way. Uh, I would recommend the show still. I, I think you would like it. You haven't watched this still yet. Mm-mm. I would highly you recommend, have recommended it. recommended it a lot. Would yeah. recommend it quite a bit uh, before HBO or Warner Bros. Discovery cancels it. Should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the new season is great. So I would highly recommend checking okay, it out. I think okay. it's five episodes out now. I don't know. I think they're usually like eight to ten episode seasons. So they're, okay. they're so pretty minutes. short seasons. And they're 20 yeah. minutes. So they're, they're, okay. it's short. You can binge them. Um, I also watched Prey. That's the one I try to watch and, or I meant to watch and didn't get around to. This was the uh, Predator 
prequel, prequel. I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, even though it's it's kind of its own standalone thing. Um, it's essentially dropping a predator into kind of like the 1700s um, into like a uh, Native Amer- I don't remember what tribe it is, but Comanche, I I, it is Comanche. Yes, because yeah. there's a they have the dub for it. Okay. Um, and it follows this uh, girl who is a part of it, and then she's trying to be she's trying to prove herself to be a warrior and like to be out there with the men. Um, and it kind of follows her journey, and then the predator who is. It's kind of interesting how they parallel because it's definitely like the this predator's first hunt, and it's kind of uh, the way they kind of pair them together. Um, okay, but the action's really good. It, it's a little slow in the beginning; it does take a bit to get going, but I honestly think it's worth it. I think the payoff to when you get to the action is like really good. It's really well choreographed, and Dan Trachenberg is a great director. He did Ten Cloverfield Lane too. Oh yeah, that one was really good. And he's done a couple short films that have been really good. I think he's just like a really solid like like vision. Okay. I think he knows what he's doing. Um, and the, the lead, she's great. Um, fantastic. Yeah, she's, she's been getting a lot of praise. She has yeah. it well deserved from her, but, uh, good, good, I, good. and um, it's an all native American cast. It is. Yes. So that's, I thought that was very cool. <laughs> um, it's very gory. Um, if you're fine with that and given them like the, I guess the budget, the CG is a little eh sometimes, but when it does do practical effects, they look great with the, the predator and everything. That's the only negative thing i've heard is that the effects are a little underwhelming sometimes a little bit and i wish they would have put a little more money to them to get the effects better because this movie is it's really good it's great yeah, it's everyone that has seen it has told me they liked it it this, did really well it, it's, it's like the highest streamed hulu and ever like people are wondering people, why it didn't uh, go to theaters so people are like oh this would have been done well in the-, but you you never know you never know and that, given the the history of the predator movies i could see why yeah especially after the last one which was not good because yeah you you can't really compare because people you know it's more at their disposal yeah so they can watch it whenever they want so obviously the numbers are going to be huge for exactly. something that's streaming yeah but you don't know if that's going to translate to box office numbers necessarily. Exactly. So but maybe they made the right choice or who knows? I think it's still the end of the day. It's like, I think this was a good decision because yeah. uh, it's a low risk. So I don't think the, the previous one did, did well, right? No, it did not. Was Reviews that the one with? That's the one that Shane Black did. Shane Black did. Yeah. That's I, unfortunate. I, yeah. You didn't care for that one. And I didn't even watch it. I didn't even bother to watch it because you guys told me it wasn't very good. Very unfortunate. Because you saw it with Brett, right? No, I watched the solo. Okay. I watched it by my. I, I don't. I think he did watch it at some point, but I watched it by myself, and I was disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after like the nice guys. That's I think it was, was yeah. the movie he did after. That's that sucks. Yeah, but uh, you win some, you lose some. So. Watch Prey. It's on Hulu. You'll okay. give it a watch. I yeah, I'm gonna try it. to. Yeah. Um. All right. So next one, uh, I caught up on the rehearsal. Nathan Fielder's show, which I talked about the first episode and what I thought the premise was it layman where it was just kind of him giving these people an opportunity to rehearse these events in their lives to like better prepare themselves. And to a degree it is that, but as you watch it, it evolves and grows into something. I don't want to spoil because I think it's like going into it, not knowing anything and like just kind of going in the journey is quite interesting. I think okay. you should watch it. I think you should. I think you. I think you enjoy it. I think it's very interesting to watch. Um, it's only going to be six episodes, so it's the last episodes this week. Okay. And the first episode's like I think almost an hour, but the rest are like 20, 30 minutes. Okay. But I would like to talk to somebody about this show because okay. I don't know anyone who's watched <laughs> the show besides me. <laughs> um, I would like to talk about somebody because I. It's really fascinating. It's really good. It's really well done, and okay. it's the line between reality and like, like fake is really tested as I'm watching. Sometimes it's hard to like figure out the line. Some stuff seems like, man, this seems really scripted, but then it's like, is it scripted? (laughs) Um, reality can be stranger than fiction sometimes. So, yeah. Um, yeah, this is on HBO max as well. Um, and it's going to have its last episode this week. So yeah, six episodes for this first season. I hope it gets more because I would like to see more. Okay. Um, at last, but not least, is Bullet Train, which is, I think, uh, came out two weeks ago now. Yeah. Um, which is the new, like, action comedy with, uh, Brad Pitt. It's a good, really good ensemble cast. It's, uh, 
Aaron Taylor Johnson, Zazie Beetz, uh, Brian Terry Henry. Bad Bunny. Bad Bunny. <laughs> um, Logan Lerman. And I enjoyed the movie. You did? The movie certainly does have a lot of issues, but overall I enjoyed the movie. Okay. I think it's a very fun movie. I think the cast is very like in it. They're 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 involved in it. They're going with it, and I think that's what makes the movie work a lot. Brad Pitt especially. He's very funny in it, and he is just fully into this character, and it's great. And Taylor Johnson and uh, Brian Tyree Henry are also really good in the, the characters they're playing. They're playing, like, brothers who are, like, uh, British brothers assassins, I guess. <laughs> um, but I think, really, the faults, mainly in this movie, are the screenplay. I think there are times where there's some good writing in it, but a lot of times there's stuff that falls really flat and doesn't okay. work. So it, it also has bad pacing. There'll be times where it cuts away to do yeah, a backstory. That's, that's what I heard, that the pacing's a little off. And the backstory, like, takes you out of it. Some stuff, it's fine, but there's, like, there's a one scene where they show you the backstory of a water bottle, and it doesn't pay off in any way. And I'm like, <laughs> this could have hit the cutting room floor. Like, what is this doing here? And they also kind of underutilize a couple characters. Um Bad Bunny is one of them. Like, they don't really use Bad Buddy enough in the movie without spoiling it. Zazzy Beats is also... I don't know why they... So, they for her character, they wrote her... It's really lazy. Like, her thing is, like, she says bitch a lot. And it's, like, really overdone and overplayed. She's not in the movie a ton, but, like, it's way too much. And it's it's kind of bad. It's very bad. But... When the movie is good, it really works. Okay. But sometimes it's hard to get past those like segments where it's Segment, like the pacing's okay. not great and the writing is not like there. But I think there is something good here, and I think if they want to do another one, if they want to do a franchise, I think Brad Pitt's a good lead for this, and I think they could do. I think they could do. They more. can improve upon it. They could yeah. improve upon it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I liked it. I would recommend checking it out. Um, I think there's it's a lot of fun to be had. Okay. So. Yeah, I do. I do want. It does interest me. So. Maybe I'll check it out. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's my list. Okay. That's everything yeah, I watched. So quite a few things. Quite a few. Yeah. But um, with that, I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. So thank you for tuning into this week's episode. Yeah. Um, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Music, or Apple Podcasts, uh, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, uh, wherever you listen to podcasts. That's, that's, that's a good place that's, to that's find us. That's a perfect us. place to find us. And if you can rate us, if you can follow us, subscribe to us, uh, whatever uh, means they have, go ahead and do it. Let us know how we're doing on there. Additionally, uh, YouTube. We have our YouTube channel. We have our video coming up on YouTube. I, I think a couple weeks I've been missed. I've been having a lot of technical issues, but they will be going up. I think I figured it out. It's an export issue on my premiere. Uh, and the last couple episodes will get video and this one as well will be up there. Uh, Daniel, where can they follow us? You can follow us on Twitter and Instagram at an action pod. And you can follow all on of TikTok us and on an, TikTok an action pod and action pod two. I told me he's going to try to figure out how yeah. to get <laughs> not to have the two, but um, you can follow us on our TikTok, see uh, clips and uh, maybe some stuff that's not on the podcast. There we go. So make sure to check that out. Uh, and then you can follow all of us individually. Uh, I'm on Twitter at DRock Mountain or on Instagram at DRocky Mountain. And I'm on Twitter at Denko89 and on Instagram at Denko Romero89. And you can follow Brett at uh, Brett's Best Bites. <laughs> yeah, I don't think he uses that one. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Until next week. Bye. Anchor.